what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my workshop. My name is Ben and this is the CNC in three video series where I boil down complicated CNC router topics and I turn them into short form videos that are easy to follow and learn from. Most of the content I see out there dealing with CNC routers is incredibly long form and it takes forever to get the answer to the question you're looking for. That's why I'm creating the series and that's what I hope to deliver to you. If you enjoy what you see and you've learned from it, please go ahead and leave a comment down below at the end of the video. And I'll continue to deliver content like this in the future, so you won't want to miss a beat. So be sure to subscribe and then click the bell icon as well, and you'll be notified every time I upload a video. I get asked quite a few CNC related questions over on Instagram. If you're not following me there, it's butlerbuilt.us on IG. You can check it out for more uh, current or up-to-date content, if you will. One of the questions I'm asked quite a bit is in relation to zeroing your Z height, the height of your spindle or the bit that's connected to your spindle. And folks are often wondering whether it's better to zero to the material surface or the machine bed underneath. Each of these options has their specific use case and today, I'd like to talk about what scenarios are best for each option. So, if you'd like to learn how to zero your Z height from the comfort of your bed, stick around. That's what we're going to get into today. Before we get going, I wanted to just hit on a couple of little terminology things and, and just a couple of little fair warnings, if you will. For this video, I'll be using and referencing Vectrix BCarve Pro software. Now, the terminology may be different in the software that you use, and those semantic differences really don't take away from the meaning. So know that the general principles that I'm going to teach will pretty much apply across the board for any G-code generating software that you might use. The other thing that I wanted to do is just hit two quick terminology things. Number one, machine bed. When I'm referring to machine bed, I'm referring to the top of the surface that makes contact with the bottom of your workpiece. Now, you may have a vacuum bed, you may have a MDF spoil board or waste board, you may just have an aluminum extruded bed that you're using on your machine. Whatever the top of that surface is that's going to connect with your workpiece, that's what we're going to refer to as the machine bed. The converse or inverse of that, of course, is the material surface. Now, when I refer to material surface, I'm referring to the top of your workpiece, the top of whatever it is that you're going to cut, acrylic, MDF, hardwood, plywood, whatever that material is, the material surface is the very top of that surface. All right, with all of the terminology out of the way, and now that we're all on the same sheet of music, let's take a peek at the two options we have for zeroing the height of the bit connected to our spindle, or the Z height, if you will. There are two main options, the material surface and the machine bed. And this illustration pretty obviously illustrates the difference between the two, but we're gonna dive a bit deeper. We're gonna start with zeroing to the material surface, and this is probably the most widely used option out there. And that's because a significant portion of the time that we're using our CNC machines as hobbyists, woodworkers, or makers, or even professional woodworkers or makers, we are using a material that has a known thickness. And that thickness is consistent across the entire material. So think of plywood, MDF, acrylic, one of those materials that is known to be the exact same thickness all the way across the sheet. 
that makes for a perfect setup to zero from the material surface. The method is well suited for pocket profile and engraving tool paths, but may not always be the best application for something like a 3D carve or potentially even a two-sided milling operation. So it's best used when you wanna batch out parts or you just want to cut a couple things out of a piece of plywood or a perfectly even piece of hardwood. So the material surface is going to be probably what you use 90 to 99% of the time. There are those times, however, when the machine bed makes for a much better option. And let's dive into that now. Zeroing to the machine bed is much less widely used and therefore I find even professional or seasoned CNC users oftentimes don't quite understand how this works and when to use it. So to better understand how to zero to the machine bed, I think it's important to start with when to zero from the machine bed. As we can see here, the method is best suited for instances where you have uneven material surfaces. Maybe you want to guarantee a specific final thickness or multiple pieces need to be the exact same width and they don't start out that way. So if you're familiar with common woodworking principles, you might recognize the process I'm about to describe as the milling process. It's the process of jointing and planing rough cut lumber to turn it into exact known thickness dimensional lumber that you can use for projects that need that consistency. The first step in this process is often to flatten one side of the material or one plane of the material. To do this, we can actually start by zeroing our Z height from the material surface. Later on, we'll zero to the machine bed, but for starting out, zeroing to the material surface is a great place to start. We're gonna get one side flat, we'll flip the piece over, and then we'll use that machine bed zeroing to get our material planed down to an exact thickness that we're shooting for. Your bit selection for this flattening really depends on what you've got in your arsenal. My friends at Bits and Bits have a phenomenal spoil board flattening or slab flattening bit. It's a monstrous two inch bit, let me show you. This thing is a workhorse. It's two inch cutting capacity and this thing removes material. So if you're in the market for some really good bits, bits and bits, they're the chits. Okay, let's attach the workpiece to the CNC bed. Uh, in this case, I'm just using hot glue and masking tape. I've got masking tape uh, on the bed and some shims to keep it from rocking. You really don't want any clamps on top of the workpiece here for this operation. You'll, you'll be sure to carve them right off with this flattening pass. You see the stats there and, and essentially pretty simple here. The piece was already pretty flat. So I made two passes at a hundredth of an inch deep and I reset my Z zero to the material surface in between each of those passes. After that, it was time to pull it off the bed, flip it over, and then we can get to making the other side flat and parallel to the first side as well. Setting up a tool path with a machine bed Z zeroing operation in VCarve Pro and pretty much every software I've used, it can be a little bit confusing what to enter for depth of cut and material thickness. So I thought we'd start by clarifying this a bit and hopefully simplifying it. There are two main numbers that you're concerned with. Number one is the known thickness. That's how thick is your material. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you choose the thickest spot you can find on that material and use it for the known thickness. 
From there, you just need to know how thick you want it to be after the machine quits carving and you have your answer for depth of cut. Subtract the desired thickness from the known thickness and you're already there. Using that highest point on your material will ensure that you're not cutting air on one portion of the cut and a quarter of an inch of material on another. Okay, here we go in VCarve Pro, and if you're familiar with my videos, we're gonna fly through this. The thickness here is the material thickness or the known thickness of 0.979. We've got machine bed set for our Z0 location. Our cut depth is 0.229, which is that number we calculated earlier. And now we can play around with our pass depths and our number of passes. This is where we can ensure that we're not cutting air on one side and that quarter of an inch of material on another. Play around with this, referencing the actual workpiece itself, and that'll give you a good idea of what you'll end up with. I'm doing a raster operation and my angle set to 180 degrees. I'm doing a profile pass to clean up the edges as the last pass and I'm ramping my plunge values. Here we see it in the simulation, but let's watch it rip on the ShopBot desktop max. Of course, ShopBot for the win. Hey now, I hope this video made the process of zeroing your Z axis much easier. I really appreciate everybody following along and supporting me in that way. My name is Ben and this has been the CNC in three video series brought to you by Butler Built Woodworking and ShopBot CNCs. Have a great day, everybody. We'll catch you on the next video.